Today, let's take a step back and talk about Animal Crossing in its primitive form, otherwise known as the older games in the Animal Crossing franchise before New Horizons, and let's see what their differences are. Who knows, you might be convinced to try them out for yourself or go back to them if you haven't played them in a while. So, let's get started. I'm only going to be talking about the mainline games, however if you want me to talk about the spin-off games in the Animal Crossing franchise, please let me know down in the comments below. Population Growing, aka the first Animal Crossing game in the mainline franchise, is the one that I had the least experience with, so I can't speak about it too much, but from what I can gather and the little amount of playtime that I've had with Population Growing, obviously it's the roots of where Animal Crossing all began. Population Growing is all about moving into this new town of animal villagers and basically just establishing relationships. This is where the foundations of Animal Crossing sort of came about, you know, decorating your house, talking to villagers, and Jaden Animations put this really well in her video about Animal Crossing, but the amount of dialogue that the <laughs> that the villagers have in the original Animal Crossing game. It's very substantial and you get a good mix of people who are nice but you also get a bit of nastiness. You'll make friends but you'll also make the odd enemy here and there. There are events that haven't even been included in the Animal Crossing franchise since this game, so I recommend giving it a go if you're interested in Animal Crossing's roots. Wild World is the first handheld version of a mainline Animal Crossing game. Wild World pretty much has a similar sort of premise to population growing, from my understanding. You move into a town, you set up your own house, you shop, you make friends with villagers. In Wild World there are also rude villagers. I would say that's how you can sort of establish Snooty villagers and cranky villagers. They were actually snooty and cranky, but I digress. If you can get past uh, the graphics, because if you're looking to move from Animal Crossing New Horizons back down to Wild World, you're going to have to get used to um, a quality decrease. Even with population growing, because it wasn't a handheld game, the graphics are significantly better. But <laughs> with that being said, if you're willing to look past that, I would recommend giving Wild World a go. Moving on from Wild World, this is where things get a bit different. While premise-wise, population growing and Wild World were pretty much similar, City Folk was um, the start of something a bit different for the franchise. Not too different, not like monumental differences, but it was a nice change of pace. You see, unless there's somewhere to go to in population growing that I don't know about, in population growing and Wild World, you're pretty much restricted to staying in one place. You're kind of forced to just hang out in your own little town, unless of course you've got people to connect with. Then you can go into their towns, but for the most part you are pretty much stuck in one place. And it never really got boring because that's all we really knew. But with City Folk, um, while there were a lot of similarities to it with Wild World, it had the city elements. In City Folk you could go, I think it was by bus, to uh, the town, the city should I say, hence Animal Crossing City Folk, Animal Crossing let's go to the city, depending what you call it, there was a city element to it. So if you got bored of just chilling in your town and interacting with villagers and you know events within the town, you could go and go to the city. The city um, had things like Gracie Grace's clothing shop, I think we also got introduced to Kix this way because he was someone who would shine your shoes, we had the hairdressers, and so many other shops, right? And we even had a credit card in this game, <laughs> uh, which is really cool, you know, that was a really cool feature. I quite liked the game, I think it was pretty fun. I might even make a City Folk series on this channel, I don't know, let's see. Moving on from City Folk, New Leaf is next, and um, I believe it was the second handheld mainline Animal Crossing game that you could get, and I think they did a really good job of keeping to the similar premise that all the Animal Crossing games before it had, while also adding new features that made it not totally different, 
but changes that kind of made sense. Again, all the Animal Crossing games, and even in New Leaf, your town was presets, you couldn't change the exterior, everything was pretty much in place, you couldn't choose where villagers would move in, so villagers would move in and out as they pleased in any location they wanted. New Leaf kept their elements, but they also made us the mayor of our towns. You know, before in previous games we were just a standard villager, you know, nothing more, nothing less. But with New Leaf came a sense of responsibility, because now we were the mayor, we had our own secretary, <laughs> and while we couldn't place furniture outside, there was a little bit of an exterior element design to New Leaf. Public works projects were introduced in New Leaf and that allowed us to put certain exterior in our town, not as much as New Horizons where you can put everything down, but certain things to give your town some character. A little bit. Again, in terms of exterior design, many things were still out of our control, um, like villagers moving in whenever they wanted and wherever they wanted. We couldn't place regular furniture outside, but whenever you wanted to put something new in the town, you had to do it officially. So while there was a very limited sense of exterior design, it was the start of players being able to give their individual town a bit more character. Again, not too much, but a little bit. And that's not even mentioning Tortimer Islands and the mini games that it had, giving multiplayer in New Leaf just a lot of character. It was so much fun. <laughs> Tortimer Island was also home to um, specific bugs that you can only get on Tortimer Islands. It was also the main source of income for um, a lot of players, because at night there were particular rare bugs that you could get, and they were worth a lot. <laughs> Honestly, New Leaf is, I think, the perfect balance between what a traditional Animal Crossing game is and including new features that just make sense. So now we come to New Horizons. New Horizons is completely different from anything we've seen in the franchise in comparison to everything else. We no longer live in towns, we live on a deserted island. We are tasked with the task of building it up from scratch. We are the ones who dictate who moves in and where. We can place everything and anything on our islands, which previously was only limited to just our houses. I'm not complaining. New Horizons has taken up <laughs> over a thousand hours of my time, so I, I have enjoyed Animal Crossing New Horizons. This video isn't me going, oh, I've played Animal Crossing since I was a wee child. Animal Crossing New Horizons sucks, that's not what I'm trying to do here. It's just that the change between New Leaf and New Horizons is a lot. There, there's so much difference. This video, I guess, highlights um, how Animal Crossing had a, a gradual change until New Leaf, and then when New Horizons came, it was full of changes, a lot of changes. There is such an emphasis on being creative with your islands and putting down anything you want on your islands. I know that I wasn't going to talk about spin-offs in this video, but New Horizons is pretty much Happy Home Designer intensified, right? <laughs> but yeah. That is all the Animal Crossing mainland games sort of summed up in a, a short video. In conclusion, I do recommend you try all of them out because they all have different purposes. While they all feel very much similar, um, they all serve different purposes and they all have their own charms, you know? But with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.